trail breaking corners are not a 1% skill. It's not the 1% of 100. It's the fraction of a percent. The goal is to have a skill set or a technique that is infallible, that no matter what you do, you will always have a skill that gets you through. Nothing surprises you, nothing catches you off guard anymore. That's what trail breaking for the street is all about. Here's a great example of a trail breaking corner in the wild. It has two features that make it a trail breaking corner. One, it's a greater than 90 degrees and it's a downhill slope, but it's not a blind curve and it's not a decreasing radius. If you ask riders who come through this corner, they'll almost all tell you it's a decreasing radius. But if you look at it from above, you'll see it's a constant radius flowing into a corner down below. The riders take all kinds of lines. Some turn in early, some turn in late, some run really wide into the oncoming traffic. Because it's a steep downhill, it's very natural to pick up the brakes and carry your brakes all the way down through this curve. This one has three features that indicate trail braking may be a preferred technique or necessary. First, it's over 90 degrees. Second, it's a blind curve. You can't see through. And third, a trail braking curve is almost always gonna be on a downhill slope or flat. They very seldom happen on an uphill because the natural incline of the hill slows the motorcycle. When you're looking at this curve, what you can't tell is it's greater than 90 degrees. So I can set my speed early here, but if I get back on the throttle, I'm in trouble because I still can't see through the edge of the curve. So I'm adding throttle, but the curve is still going. In fact, I still can't see the curve. I can't see it now, and I can't see it now. I still can't see the curve. I'm looking for the curve. I've already committed the throttle. I'm going way too fast. That's the point. Trail braking allows us to carry the brakes until we have an exit. That's all it is. It's not about going faster. It's not about being a racer. It's not about exceeding speed limits. It's about making sure you don't get surprised and you don't run off the side of the road. Before we get into the technical details of how to use or employ trail braking on the street, let's clarify that trail braking is not an advanced technique that should only be taught to advanced riders who have been riding for years and done track days and everything else. This is a technique that should be taught straight out of the gate, even to brand new novice riders. And I'm gonna explain why this is the case and why trail braking is so misunderstood for street riders. The idea is to have a technique that allows us to get through every corner, no matter what, even if it's the first time we see it. And here's the problem with the press and pray method, which means you get into a corner and you realize you overshot the corner, you're going too fast, and you're supposed to just relax and press more and look through the corner. And let's be real about that. If you're that far into the corner and you've already made that error, you are not going to lean into the corner more and just push more, which is why I call it the press and pray. Not that that wouldn't work if you have good traction and you have the skills, but the truth is, if you're making that call, you've already made a mistake. And trail braking is not a savior technique, it is a planning technique so you don't end up in those situations. So the problem is, when we start with riding, if we're gonna do the press and pray method, and we're going into a 90 degree corner, we're, we're riding along the road and we, and we come out to here, and about here, if you look at this, this is about the point that you would see all the way through the corner. This is where you start to see the curve on the road that would tell you it's time to turn in. The problem is with the idea that you're supposed to finish all of your braking before the tipping point is that at this point, 
if you can't see through this corner, you don't know where the corner is actually going. You don't know if this hooks all the way around. You don't know if it just continues. All you know at this point is that the corner is going to keep going. And if you let off the brakes now, you're overcommitted to an exit that you don't have yet. The idea with trail braking is to come into that same point, but when we get to that point and you look through that corner and you see that there's the corners keeps moving, it's going to continue, then all we're going to do is maintain pressure on the brake lever. You're not going to do a lot of hard braking because you've already done your best guess. As you're approaching this corner and you're looking at this outside edge that you can see, you've done all the braking you think is necessary to make it through that corner, assuming that it's 90 degrees, which is the most typical corner we have on a public road. When you get to this point, you realize the corner is at 90 degrees. What you're going to do is maintain brake pressure as you tip into the corner. Once we get in that corner about here, we start looking through and that's the, the very end of that curve before it goes to the straight. So at this point, you start maybe getting first indication that maybe this corner is gonna, gonna go ahead and straighten out, but you're not really sure until you go just a little bit farther. Once I get to about here, then I actually have visibility to look all the way through the curve. And when I look through that curve now, now I can see that you know, this curve is gonna start increasing in its appearance that it's moving away from me. And that tells me that, okay, now I can tip into that curve, and now that rider, they can come in and they can ride all the way through. And the point is, is that when we make this tip in, we're gonna carry our brakes, and instead of getting off the brakes right there, we're gonna start into that curve until we get to that tip in point. And then we're gonna let off the brakes. Now, as far as what trail braking is, there's a couple different ways to define it, and we might be talking a little bit of semantics. When I attended the CHAMP school recently, the way they define trail braking is that you're trailing off of the brakes as you come through the corner. Because when we get to this point, we don't just let go of the brakes. We start trailing off the brakes, and then we pick up that throttle, and then we go ahead and we accelerate all the way through the curve. For me, I've always defined trail braking as carrying my brakes past the tip-in point. So as I come in here, and this would be the normal tip-in, I continue to brake into this corner, holding the brakes, easing off the brakes as I go in, which means that I'm trailing off the brakes or trailing past the tip-in point. It doesn't really matter which definition you prefer. If you like the champ school definition that you're trailing off the brake, it's the same result as opposed to I'm trailing the brakes into the curve. The point is, is whichever definition you prefer, the goal is this is a planned activity. And the point is, is that I haven't overcommitted. No matter what happens in this corner that I can't see, because it's a blind corner here, no matter what happens, I've got a reserve. I, I can still do something without being overcommitted. And the other huge, massive benefit to trail braking is that when you use the press and pray method, you're using up all of your reserves to finish a corner that you've misread and made a mistake on. That means as you're going into the curve and I realize oh, it's still going, I have to press more and more and more and lean more and more and more, and I'm running out of that. And if you're on a street bike, especially something with limited ground clearance, you may run out of ground clearance before you ever run out of traction. With the trail braking method of cornering, and again, I advocate that this is something that should be taught to all riders at all levels. When you start trail braking, the way you can tighten up a curve besides press is just to slow down. And that's the reality. There's two ways you can tighten a curve. And one is to lean more, the other one is to slow down. The more you slow, at that same lean angle, that corner will tighten. Which means that because I'm already on the brakes, and I get to choose when I bleed them off, if something happens that I don't expect, all I have to do is continue to slow into that corner. And that maintains that traction reserve, it also maintains a lean angle on the bike. There are several other benefits to trail braking. We start talking about traction loading, we talk about 
the change in geometry of the motorcycle for certain speeds. There are other benefits. But the one that I want to focus on in this specific video are not those performance aspects or even the dynamics of the motorcycle, but just simply the fact that I never commit to an exit until I see it. Learning to trail brake on the street has its inherent risk. And learning to trail brake in a closed environment where you're in a large parking lot area or on a closed racetrack is a much better place to perfect those skills because when we're on the street, we cannot take things to limit. That's not where we find limitations. It's way too dangerous and way too hazardous. What I did was come down and join the Yamaha Champion School borrowed this Ducati so I could get out on the track and really work on perfecting my skills, not for the track, not to go fast, but so I'm better on the street, so I never blow a corner, so I stay alive to ride another day. We're on that throttle, we see the corner, we know it's gonna turn, I'm gonna make my best guess. I'm gonna use front and rear brake, I'm gonna roll that throttle shut, and I'm gonna begin applying the front brake and rear brake until I slow to the speed I think I need for the corner. But because I don't know what that speed is, I'm gonna maintain pressure on that brake and maintain load on that front tire. And I'm gonna allow the bike to tip into the corner and continue through until I have an exit, until I have the direction and I can actually drive out of it. Then I can trail off the brakes, pick up my throttle, and then I can drive out from there. It's really that simple of a technique, but it takes a lot of practice to perfect. Mid-corner braking is what we refer to as oh shit braking. It means that you've got into the corner and you've already given up on the brakes and now you're trying to get back on the brakes again. Trail braking for the street should be smooth and planned and linear. It is a preventive method, not a recovery or a savior. That means that when I'm in the corner, I'm not just going on the brakes, easing off the brakes and carrying those all the way to the end. There's going to be changes as I go through that corner. As you gain more visual information going through that corner, you may ease off the brakes and start to pick up throttle or you may trail the speed to tighten that corner back up. That's different than off the brakes and commit to an exit. That's just adjusting to use your speed to keep you in the place where you want to be within the lane. Instead of leaning more or leaning less, you increase speed to open the arc or you decrease speed to tighten the arc. When it comes to trail braking, the rear brake is often very misunderstood. You'll get people who spend time on a racetrack who swear that they don't need the rear brake, they only trail brake with the front. And certainly in a racing environment on a track, that may be acceptable, but on the street it really isn't. Because even if it's only 10%, or 20% or 30% of your braking, that's a lot to give up. But it also stabilizes the bike and chassis. When you're only using the front, you get a lot more forward transfer, more than you actually need. The goal is to load the front tire, not overwhelm the front tire. And if the back of the bike is trying to go around the front and pivot on that steering head, that's not gonna help have good control of the motorcycle. The rear brake, should be employed and should be used as part of trail braking when we're on the street. We go light, we use the front for our primary control, but we absolutely include the rear brake. The process for trail braking is really simple and there's, there's a couple different ways to do it, but the way they teach it when you go to the champ school or the street school is to separate your throttle from your brake. So you're not going to be overlapping them. And this is actually the most common way that I use trail braking on public roads. And the idea is that when I'm rolling on the throttle, I'm on the, I'm on the gas or I'm on the throttle, when it's time to slow, I'm going to ease that throttle closed. I'm going to let my fingers run up onto that brake and start picking up the brake. And I'm doing that well before my entry point to the corner. I've, again, I'm not talking about racing. I'm talking about staying alive on public roads. Nothing should be a surprise. Nothing happens in a hurry and nothing happens abruptly. So as you're coming in, you roll off that, off that throttle, you pick up the brakes, front brake and your foot brake, and you start applying that brake nice and gentle to get your entry speed. Now what you're doing on the public road is you're guessing your best guess of where that corner is going. Because trail braking happens really in three different situations. One is going to be a blind corner. If you can't see the exit, you're gonna end up 
very likely trail breaking into the corner. If it's greater than 90 degrees and you can't see through it, and downhill curves. These are all very natural places on public roads where trail breaking is really the ideal way to manage that corner. And what you're doing is setting your speed for your best guess. If at 90 degrees that corner doesn't open up or you still don't have an exit, you don't let go of the brake. The idea is that you're just gonna hold on to it. Now you're not gonna be hard brakes the whole time. That's not the idea. We're not just ah, all the way into this. The idea is you brake firmly to set that speed and then you ease off just slightly, allowing a little bit of load to maintain in the front tire and to keep the brake light on. Now if you're going really slow, you may just have the brake light on. You're just taking the slack out of the lever. That way, as you go through the corner, if you end up with a sudden change, if you realize the corner is going a lot farther than you think, or if something happens mid-corner, you're already on that lever. That allows you to just increase pressure to tighten up that corner, or if there's something where the road just totally ends, you can come to a stop. Because on public roads, we are never riding faster than the distance we can see and stop. That's it. That's a firm rule. Thanks for watching the channel and make sure you leave your comments below on what you think about trail braking and what skills riders really need to know to stay alive on the road. For all of you that support me on Patreon, thank you for keeping this channel alive. Your contributions are what keep this channel free of outside sponsorship. Also, a huge thank you to the Champ School for giving me access to their instructors, to their curricula, and to the track. They are my preferred track school. I'll do a review on them at a later time, but I really do like those guys. This is not the first time I've spent time with them. So thank you, Champ School. Thank you all of you on Patreon. And if you're just here and enjoying the channel and sharing with people, thank you for watching the channel. Remember, smile while you ride, attitude matters.